I am going to add to the many YouTube videos on the topic of bad record covers. There are websites dedicated to this topic that have been around for years. Record album cover arts can be very strange, funny, revolting, bewildering, or just bad. It's plain bad. It is interesting to see the history of changing styles and aesthetics through the square foot window of the record album cover. It is a window that will give one a very unique perspective on history. Why is that? Well, for one thing, it is a difficult design problem. The canvas that the designer has to work with is limited to a 12-inch square. You may notice that pictures, those that you have on your wall, are almost never square. Even an inch discrepancy on a medium-sized picture is going to give you an aesthetically superior composition to a square. A record cover almost always includes text. Usually there has to be the name of the artist, the title of the record, often the record company, sometimes additional information. People generally buy records for the music contained on them, not the picture on the cover. So naturally the cover is less of a priority. However, if there's a real nice cover, even if it doesn't help the record sales, it sure will. As I stated previously, there are many YouTube videos about the worst record albums uh, ever made, but this one I would like to thank is unique because all of the others that I have seen are slideshow format and do not include commentary on the topic. If you made one with commentary, that is not because I am ignoring you, I haven't seen it. Also, this video contains a story, which I will get into later. Of all the record album cover sites, my favorite is called the Cover Lover, primarily because of the sheer volume of covers. Many of the sites have a lot of the same material. LP Cover Lover has some very unusual items, rare items that you are not likely to see anywhere else. So what makes a bad record cover? Why is it bad? Let's look at some examples. This is the McGothlands. He's coming. What makes this a bad cover? Okay, yes, the clothes and the decor looks goofy now, but it didn't at the time that the record was made. I have a problem with the text going over the folds and the curtain. It makes it hard to read. The head of the bass look, looks like it's sticking out of the pianist's ear and the composition is too busy. Overall, not a pleasant image. So, if you have never heard of Janet Green, don't feel bad. She was launched as a right-wing response to Joan Baez in the mid-1960s. She sang folk songs with an ultra-conservative theme and attempted to imitate the folk style of the era. She sounds as bad as her record cover looks. This plain black and white cover says low budget, lack of imagination, and Janet's facial expression seems to say, I really don't care if you buy my record or not. There are some favorites that keep appearing in bad record cover sites. This is one of those favorites. Millie Jackson's 1989 release, Back to the Shit, is often given a high position on worst covers lists. But I don't think that this one and other professional albums like it really count. Millie obviously intended to be offensive. This cover was no accident, and I would imagine that she probably had to fight with some of her production crew and the record company to get this cover released to the GP. Even Millie's most adoring fans probably don't want to see her taking a crack. Millie was aware of that, and that's the point. For me, a true bad record cover has to happen by accident. Here we go. When the intended message and the perceived message are not exactly the same. These guys did not mean for this to be the creepy, funny thing that it is. And then there's this one. Again, 
humor in the ironic creepiness that makes it look makes you look at it and just say you have got to be fucking kidding me this is the kind of bad artwork that has a surreal quality to it, bewilderment and it gives you the question is this real or is it a hoax now that brings us to the story over the years, this record cover has been circulating the internet, often riding in the top five of the worst album covers lists. It had become a topic of conversation in various discussion groups, one of them being Snopes Urban Legends. The question, is this a real record cover or is this something that somebody created in Photoshop? I've not found out for sure when Ken first appeared on the internet, but it was a few years before Snopes' uh, discussion came about it in April 2nd, 2007, at least. I have provided a link to this discussion where the story unfolds as you read the posts. I'll give you a rundown on the story. The discussion started when someone asked if the Ken, by request only record, was real or not. They provided a link to the Museum of Bad album cover site where this one was featured. The original poster thought that it was a fake. Others chimed in. Well, some of those records in the Museum of Bad record covers are confirmed real, but that doesn't mean all of them are real. There is no information about this record except in reference to bad cover lists. But there are many do-it-yourself records for which there is no information on the Internet. So it goes back and forth. Could this be real? Yeah, it could be real, but why is there no evidence of where that one would find almost invariably on an old record cover? Why is there no last name, no track listing? And there's no other photograph on this record of this record other than that one that seems to be in pristine condition. On the other hand, if one were to create a fake, cheesy 70s album cover, is this what they would fake? Why not an over-the-top cheesy 70s album cover? More like this one. Could this be an old friend of Ken's who found some photos of him and did this as a joke? Well, yeah. And there is no name of the record company on the front, but... Many albums don't have the name of the company on the front. Someone, uh, some people had put some rather ambitious effort into finding this record. No luck. The record did not appear in books on bad album cover art. It did not show up in music databases. No other copy had been discovered at thrift stores, flea markets. Nobody could find it. A couple of months had passed, and the consensus at Snopes was leaning toward Ken was a fake. But still, you never know. June 11, 2007. There's still hope. There are many obscure records out there. Maybe another copy of Ken's by request only just might turn up. Then, August 21, 2007. Ken. By request only, shows up in an eBay auction. And the record that they show in the auction is a different photograph. There is visible wear to the cover. Could the auction be bogus? It could be. The type of wear that shows up on an old record cover can be faked with Photoshop. I've done it myself. But the seller has good feedback. There is nothing in the auction that suggests that the item is a pony. The auction description provides new information. The last name. This is Ken Snyder. But we are still missing a picture, the back cover, a track listing, a record company. Are we sure this is the real deal? Someone from Snopes contacted the eBay seller. Ken Snyder is a real guy. There is a track listing. The record company is the sounding board of Easley, South Carolina. There is a catalog number, KS1036. The seller provides a photograph of the back cover and the disc itself. It looks like this record really does exist. And Ken, 
Someone found out that Ken is a pastor at a church in the same city in Idaho, Idaho, Iowa, that was listed on the back of his old record. It was also a phone number. Someone called and got an answering machine that confirmed that Ken was still at the same number, but he didn't leave a message. August 22nd, Ken's record has been bid up to $66 and climbing. It's confirmed that the seller is not Ken himself, so does Ken know? August 23rd, one of the Snopes team contacted Ken. He knew that his record was famous on the internet for being one of the worst album covers, but he did not know about the eBay auction, in which the item was going sky high. Later that day, Ken sold for $135. Ken's daughter posted on Snopes. Ken made a few records back in the 1970s. By request only was released in 1976. He had a sense of humor about being on the worst record covers list. Ken actually had four copies left in the original plastic wrap. He autographed them, and who could blame them? Put them up for sale on eBay. Ken has achieved some minor fame for a very limited amateur production that was created 34 years ago. You can hear the songs from Ken by request only on YouTube. Links are provided. This happened a few years ago, but if you happen to come across one of Ken's records, I bet it still retains some market value. Before that internet, that record could not have fetched more than a quarter of a junk shop or garage sale. I just wanted to share this because it's a great story. <laughs>